Welcome to episode 92 of We Have Issues. I'm Anthony. And I'm Stevie Wildcard. And every week, Stevie Wildcard and I get together and we do our best to take our issues and we drain all of their lifeblood and uh, throw our issues, uh, corpse in the, the the drain, and we get something done, Stephen. We are vampires, <laughs> We are vampires. We drain, we drain our issues dry. We drain our issues dry. We get something done. We, we, we make comic books. Most recently, it's been a... An awesome supernatural action comedy comic book called Deathless, Stephen. I, I'm about to write a YouTube. I'm super excited. I'm super pumped. And we've done a lot. Uh, we ran a Kickstarter campaign. It was thankfully uh, very successful. I can't wait to get the book to everyone. Stephen, how are we doing this week? What were you? What did you want to do? So I wanted to finish page twenty. I believe it is twenty one. I can't so remember. Close. We close. are so close, close. but I. Uh, I failed. We'll just get that out of the way. Go ahead. We're not close. Failure. We're not close. We're <laughs> making backwards. We're just like two steps backwards <laughs> and then three more steps backwards, Stephen. What is this? So I thought it was out. I I still don't even know what it was for sure, but it was at, at the very least, it was a pretty severe cold. Stephen had uh, COVID. Okay. Yeah, so. Basically. <laughs> uh, so like early, early last week, my throat was itchy and then it just, it just kept getting worse. And then yeah. by, th by Thursday, I was just out. I was, uh, and if anyone's been following the, the the show or anything like that, um, everyone my, has all these Friday, Fridays and Saturdays are usually my my most productive days when it comes to drawing. So for the the heart of the cold to happen on those days was pretty devastating. But I did still get this much of it done. So the entire page is is rough. But then I also have almost the entire first panel done, or I had most of the first panel done, and most of the biggest part of the splash like mostly done okay. so i just have the bottom two and then I, I do have to finish the top panel and then yeah and then i think we're on the final four after that or the final three i always forget where we're at i finished my stuff i finished coloring the page i think it looks really good as far as flats are concerned um and also i've been i i, I had like a bunch of like really cool epiphanies about um issue two where i was just like i'm gonna re uh re outline the pages and kind of figure this out a little bit and i i mean i was kind of talking to you about that a little before we recorded and uh, mm -hmm. what do you think like how does it sound so far oh dude i'm so excited for it now because like i didn't really know the direction of what what brian you know like what that what that was all going to entail like i assume you know we you had already kind of talked about like what his powers were going to be and i was just thinking just you know very basic like people were under his you know control his control or whatever but like i love what you've come up with and how you frame that whole issue now like it's really cool it like correlates to douglas and his past and everything that's gonna be mm -hmm. awesome yeah i so. do i'm so excited so like i'm i'm like pumped up to, to write issue two i can't freaking wait i've been like i mean I, I it's so funny i've been writing things in like little pieces which i don't usually do but I, when i'm at work um i you know I, I work retail and it's like summertime so it's been dead you know for the most part so whenever i don't have anything to do i've been sitting there and just like jotting down notes i put them in my pocket and i throw them on my desk and i'm just like and recently i've just been kind of like grabbing them all i'm just making this big voltron of a comic book <laughs> you know and it's been like and I, I love it so far i'm so freaking excited um so i can't wait dude i think people are gonna love issue one and i like i think issue two is gonna be like it's it's gonna the book like gets to really take off in issue two yeah because like, issue one's a lot of setup and there was yeah. a lot of dialogue that had to, yes. to had to happen but we i felt like you know i kept the art interesting and we kept most of the story beats good so i i think it's going i think i think issue one's awesome an awesome oh, yeah. setup point and i was just thinking though as you were describing issue two once we finish issue one and start issue two that's going to be the first granted play the game is our first comic but that's going to be the first comic we've ever done like a sequential like series on which is going to yeah. be which is, which is the first for us which is really cool like yeah. we're gonna something get we've always two. we've always yeah. planned yeah we've always planned to do yeah. this but i can't wait to it's I like crazy so, that it's happening Stephen and I, Stephen and I have been doing this for 20 years together, trying our best to make comic books. Yeah. Obviously, obviously, it's it's failed several times in the past. Um, we were we were very successful and like did our best and continued to you know just commit to play it again, and it worked out. And it's like people seem to really enjoy that book. I've met a couple of people this week who were you know just finding our podcast and like really excited to read that. And, you know, I just like I love it. I love hearing. Yeah, we got some orders this past week or two. It's like, it's, cool. It's, it's like, cool. Like, and, it, and it's funny. Cause like I'm like both of us suck so bad at the marketing part of it that like I honestly forgot that we had that book. I forgot I forget that we have the like ostrich colony like scrapbook and stuff. Like I forget. Um, cause I'm so like in this like deathless world now. My whole headspace has just been like deathless. And then when I'm not thinking of deathless, Stephen, I'm thinking about monsters. <laughs> and like <laughs> I'm thinking about like last week. If if you're if you, if you didn't hear our episode last week, 
Or if you were like watch the first couple minutes and you're like, oh, they're getting kind of heavy in this one, skip ahead, watch our conversation about werewolf nipples. It's the best conversation <laughs> about werewolf nipples you're going to see at least this month. Like, you're not going to get a better one. Um, we may start a werewolf nipple trend. I mean, it may, it may take off on TikTok. Who knows? But yeah. I mean, hashtag wolf nips. Um, wolf nips. But so, Stephen, I just have a couple questions. Now, I don't think we, because you and I, we both like vampires um too much and like a lot of people seem to be like sick of vampires and that sort of thing but um most vampires most... and zombies pretty much have been pushed to their their limits yeah a lot of people feel that way steven but you know what i i personally feel like when people start start to get sort of like bored with things or overwhelmed by things or uh fatigued in a, in a way by a certain particular thing or something becomes cliche or you know like too tropey um that is the perfect time to strike the creative iron. Like, like, like it is the the perfect time to jump in there with a take on something that will just redefine the genre. You know, it's it's just like you absolutely can, you can saturate the market with a million zombie movies. You know, but if you have one that's actually good, it's gonna stand out because there are so there's so much garbage. You know, mm. it's the reason we can all name and we will all say the same three to five werewolf movies. You know, like it like it's it's because there are a million of them. Like there are millions of werewolf movies, but only so many good ones, you know? Um mm -hmm. same thing happens with a lot of movies. That being said, dude, um I just have a couple of questions for you um about okay. about vampires. So I'm gonna do our monster test. Ooh, vampire monster test, huh? Vampire edition, Steven. I just it, it's gonna be just to just 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 phase one of the vampires, because we're gonna come back to them. I'm like, we'll we'll do other monsters in the future, come back, we'll come back to vampires uh, occasionally. But Steven, question first, what do you know about vampires? I know vampires to be, at least in the way that I like to view them. Um, I, I do like the Buffy, the vampire slayer version of vampires, where basically the human body is bitten and then it, it it's, you know, the demon, the, the vampire is like the demon spirit that is now taking the form of that body. That's one cool way. But is that the way I actually like, though? I like the Lost Boys way, which is basically you are who you are. But now that you have like these like crazy, dem like powerful vampire powers that it just corrupts most people. So like almost like a not a germ because there was it was it, it was done all like uh, all uh cursy slashy like ritually is what i was looking for ritual but yeah so i like the idea that you're still the same person you're not like a whole new being you brought up lost boys and this is the thing that's been plaguing me steven it's been plaguing me in lost boys one of our favorite movies of all time go check out our episode 50 lost boys special by the way but one of our favorite movies steven lost boys in order to become a vampire what did you have to drink you had to drink david's well he had to drink david's blood right or the blood yeah. of whoever, whichever vampire is siring them basically, the blood right? of a vampire right you, so you drank the blood like they don't drink you you drink them right yes. so so Yes, in order to become a vampire, in in this, this that happens in a lot. It, that's like that's like the sexier version of vampires is like you have to drink their blood, which kind of makes sense. Like you know, I mean, I you know, I, I I suppose you can get like you can get diseases from things biting you, so it makes it you know that also makes sense. I see that, but I like the idea that in order to share like a, a it's certain... more elegant, right? Because like when you think of like something biting you and you becoming it, like right, you think of, um, like something fair, like a zombie or a werewolf. Speaking of right? elegant, Stephen. Can you imagine living in that world? This is what I'm getting at here, Steven. <laughs> in a world in which drinking vampire blood makes you, be, it makes you become a vampire, wouldn't vampires be just as scared of me as I am of them? <laughs> because I'm gonna drink you, boy. Yeah, like, good luck, vampire. Come come get me. Come get me. I'm literally gonna bite you back. Like, I'm gonna... Dude, I'm, like, think of, like, some huge, like, Mission Impossible, like, terrorist plot where, like, some dude, like some badass dude, like gets a vampire and like straps him into like the wa the town's water well and just like bleeds him into the town's water and turns the entire town into vampires. Yeah, that'd be badass. <laughs> I don't know if that... <laughs> but no, like yeah, but that'd be pretty cool though. Like people, like what if vampires became so rare that people are trying to become, you know, like because like they just you know whatever they keep like people are pursuing them or something. I don't know. And yeah, th their blood their blood is rare, so they're trying to. Yeah, kind of like an I am legend situation, but yeah. not as well, not as well. I mean, 
Steven, I just imagine, like, if you look at any website, like, health website, like, you'll find some ridiculous thing. Like, people are willing to go to absurd lengths. Like, there are movies in which, like, people, yeah, like, not even just movies, there's a reality in which people eat placenta. Like, people do things, like, whatever they believe will make them look younger or feel stronger or better in some way, they will do it. So imagine a world in which there are vampires. Like, you would have an army of Karens trying to fight like, <laughs> Dracula to become young again. Like you would have, like, like you know, like it, it would. We would. They would be sought after. Like it, it, you know, like we. It would be like I am legend. You yeah, know, like we would because like they, humans wanna... are the things that go bump in the day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I just I just think that's so amazing. Anyway, but vampires, right? What are the vampires' weaknesses as far as you like and as far as you know? This is probably gonna be controversial. Uh I've always preferred the association of silver with werewolves over vampires. I liked um I I, I like Dawn simple. had the best reaction, like response to that, I think. Do you remember I, that? So and from I, dust and from Dust Till Dawn, um one of the characters says, Silver. Silver had something to do with, with vampires. Another character goes, Silver bullet or silver that's werewolves. And he goes, No, silver bullets are werewolves, but silver has something to do with va with vampires. And he goes, Does anyone or then Kate says, Does anyone have any silver? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, then, no. Then why does it matter? You know, but like, and, yeah. but then, so they never even solve that that mystery in that movie. But it's just such a fun way to do that because it's like that is the reality. I don't think like I would literally have to rack my brain in a way that I'm incapable of if there was a vampire in the house to to find silver. You know, I'd be like, do I have silver? Is it, like maybe like who has silver? Do I have a piece? Of, I don't think so. You know, like do I have any coins <laughs> that have silver in it enough to affect a vampire? Is why? there enough in the? Do I have a Susan B. Anthony? Where's the <laughs> Susan B. Anthony coin? I've sharpened it. I'm going to throw it at him. So, but, uh, and stakes are kind of like, that's kind of like a bold thing. Like, I'm going to kill you. Could you even kill a person with a wooden stake if you had to? Like, if if like someone could. had like brass knuckles, though, or like right, right, something right. that made them a little stronger than you in that moment. Right. Could you stake them before they, before they beat the crap out of you? That's the question. Because like, staking okay. is... Staking's not that effective if you're not a very good staker. I mean, yeah. like, that's stabbing true. something directly in the heart that's ten times stronger than you. That's okay, that's a perfect example. Could you stake a chimpanzee before it ripped, it, ripped your face off? There's only one way to find out, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Chimpanzo. No, I was kidding. Chimpanzo. Yeah, dude. So, so okay. So, so we're, we're, we're getting all over the place. But so vampires, super strong. Super strong. Um, even if, so, uh, so I don't care for still. I don't care. I don't care for the silver. You don't care for the Steak, silver. Stakes are the best way to do it, but I, I don't see the you know that being an efficient way to do right. it. I've never understood. Do you know the what, what's the reasoning for garlic? I've never I understood. I don't know. I don't know that. Like, I, I like the idea that vampires were smart enough to just put out a bunch of fake news for people. Yeah. And just so that, like, we don't know. They're like, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, man, we're, we we hate garlic and we hate silver. Like, all the mm -hmm. stuff. We hate it. And it's like, that now they get now they get fancy forks and, like, a delicious meal. You know? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> What you <laughs> oh, they, oh, the humans hung the aromatics for us, so their blood will taste so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I do like that idea. I don't actually know where the garlic comes from. I mean, I'm I'm pretty curious about that. What do you think about like the religious iconography, and do you think it should be as specific as it has been historically? Yeah, because no one's smashing a vampire's face in with a statue of Buddha, you know, yeah. like. And I I did like I. I do like the whole, like, it's the faith behind the object, but at right. the same time, that does make sense, but at the same time, it doesn't make sense because it's like, well, if so it's the faith behind the object, why is not somebody use something else? Why isn't someone taking prayer beads from a monastery and strangle the vampire with them? You know what I'm saying? Or, like, just, or just like a Tony Robbins character who's like, I believe in myself. Oh, man. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> we need Terry Crews from the Old Spice commercial. Dude, just like going to Terry Crews, like, bare-knuckle boxing a vampire to death. Like, that's oh, what because I he believes in himself. in that movie, for sure. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, but, but that's true. Like, um, I mean, like, in, like, the Freddy Krueger uh like world of like oh your belief or like like it like your belief gives this thing power so it's like that's kind of what what that would suggest about vampires right because like if your belief in whatever thing 
um creates like a power vacuum for the vampire <laughs> like you know like destroys mm -hmm. the vampire's power what is the vampire you know like does it exist as a whole i mean i guess it needs which it makes you wonder is the vampire super strength vampire super speed all that stuff is it just perception like at that point like does he actually possess those gifts or is it like your your faith in being able to stop that thing prevents those powers from it's like right. weird that you it's it's weird that you can become kryptonite basically to a vampire but i feel like with vampire mythos though though if they do establish like a hell right. like a true hell like a demon vampires are demons from hell then then the the crew the, you know, right. the, the cross makes sense right. you're literally using the op the, the, you know the antithesis of the, of right. what this is that you know sense. that that if makes a demon possessing a creature or like if demons a exist and obviously heaven exists in right. that in that reality so therefore that should work you I don't know. know you say that Stephen, but like I can imagine a multiverse like in which there's only there are only demons it's demons and demons back to 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 faith in oneself power of belief behind an object I think is like where we were before we completely trailed off yes yeah dude so I don't know okay I I like the idea I like the idea that there are rules to the vampire. So, like, whatever it is, it's it's like um, it's a physical thing that has um, it, it can have weaknesses. But I don't like the idea that you can. It's just the faith in the thing that makes it work. I like mm. I, which like I I like it in it happens in in Fright Night where it's like the guy you know he's holding the cross and he's like that doesn't mean anything. Actually, I've I've said this on the podcast once before, but I was like. That the truth is, in a situation in which I'm faced with a demonic monster like a vampire, no one in the whole universe in the history of man has ever had more faith in the thing in my hand than I would holding a cross, knowing, because that's, I mean, that's not what faith is, that's knowledge. You're like, I'm looking at the thing that is the antithesis of this thing, he's, you know, like, I he's know. He's here. I there's know. a demon in front of me. Yes, there's a demon this in front thing of me. says, yes. this thing has always said these things existed, and now this thing is here, so this thing must be something. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I so, mean, that's the... So, and, like, that's what happens at Fright Night. He's like, oh, it's it's not just the thing. It's the faith in the thing. And then he just kind of, like, more specifically, like, like you know, with more emphasis, holds it forward. And he's just like, you mean this? And, you know, it's like, Jerry Danger is just like, no. Nah. He's like, ah. You know, but 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 it's like, oh, I mean, is it faith at that point? Or is it just, like, the, the knowledge of, you know, the weapon, the kryptonite? You know, mm -hmm. it's like. It, it, it's like it's like Superman being like, oh, it's not the rock. It's it's the faith in the rock. And you're like, yeah, but it's green and it's from your planet. And here you go. And you're like, and he's like, oh, no, you're right. You know, it like, is. Like, it's, like, just, it's literally the object itself. It's, it's the object. It's like, this. It's this. It's the thing it represents. I get it. But anyway, actually, like, it's so weird to think about crosses, though. Like, OK, Stephen, how old are vampires then? How old are vampires? Because because think about this. Like, OK, I you. If we're talking about if we're talking about like vampires that are actually actively affected by like like faith based stuff like somebody you know like it is affected wholly and like devastatingly like by like crosses and like the symbol of Jesus in general, um, do they predate Jesus? How when, many vampires have been killed by a dreidel? Is what I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> but Stephen, Stephen, like, were there vampires? prior to jesus who were just like walking around and then suddenly they like whoa i don't like that guy like, I don't like that. <laughs> like, judas I don't was like... a vampire <laughs> 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 like like do they like did the first vampire like, like they go to drain someone and there's something around their neck and they're like what is this your name is <laughs> Teresa, and like that's, my name's not Teresa. that's not that's a lowercase t it's not an uppercase <laughs> and they're like wait no no and it's just like, like how does that work you know but like how like okay so so how would that work? Like, because it, it, it couldn't. It couldn't be like, vampires couldn't predate. Cre what if, Stephen? Okay, Stephen. Okay, Stephen. Now, now, just for the sake of like, like the, the world, like the world building of a vampire. The who, fictional universe of the this fictional vampire universe world. of a vampire who's created or, or, or who like lives in a world that in which they are affected physically um, by crosses, right? What if? Jesus being crucified. He's on the cross, okay? As he's being crucified, obviously he's bleeding from his wrists. You know, he's, he's bleeding from his feet. Um, as the it, it is the sacrament and it's like the, you know, like the wine becomes Jesus' blood and such, um, so one of his followers catches some of the blood. And 
And the other followers are like, no, that's unholy. That's that's the damned blood of the sinners that created that. And they're, they're like, no, this is our Savior's blood. And he's like, no, it won't give you eternal life. And he drinks it and it does give him eternal life, but not spiritually. It gives him physical eternal life. Like the so, flesh, basically. Yeah. So so like drinking the blood of his savior of his savior did the opposite thing because of the symbol of what was actually happening at the time and the type of blood it was. So it wasn't the pure blood of the pure Jesus as he would have preferred it, but and it, it was, like spawns the entire So then the symbol of Jesus um affects them physically because it's more of the representation of the purity and then also the wooden stake being the wood that's symbolic of the wood that he was crucified on would make more sense and tether it does tether the, the like, i wonder it does tether that pretty pretty neatly <clears throat> like because what why is it a wooden stake why does it have to be wood why does it have to be a cross why does it have to be yeah so it does kind of neatly bow all that stuff together so, for sure yeah so i like the idea of like a well-intended but misinformed uh you know like like faithful follower doing the wrong thing you know for the right reasons you know like trying his mm -hmm. best to like to you know to just you know symbolic but not under understanding, and not understanding the symbolism the of what the what was happening during the yes. got you and then and then through that he can just like thanos and like many other villains you know uh, that exist um maybe he's a well-intended you know person who thinks like now i have eternal life and what i need to be is a fisher of men and he goes out and he's trying to create more of his type more of his coven who are going to live forever because he's so consumed with what he did was the right thing yes. and then yes and, and then, then it has so, to be stopped ultimately it has to be stopped. yeah of course so yeah so i, I mean it 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 feels scary to walk around that concept i know but, it, it, I know. but it's a really good it's a really good it's a really good concept though yeah, really i, I good. hope everyone like first i like i don't know how comfortable you are talking about your faith mm. on our show but like i i hope everyone who is watching this understands like how much respect and love steven and i have for everyone regardless absolutely of yeah we're not trying to dismiss <clears throat> it like we're just saying in this fictional yes. in this universe where this vampire is happening in, in this universe we utilize what some people believe is true, what some people do not, as the basis of the creation of the vampires. Is what yeah, and yeah, but I don't. I kind of like that idea. I don't think that's the idea that we have as a whole, like as a mm -hmm. society. I don't think more people think of vampires. No, but that, think of the, that is a pretty interesting but, way to kind of spin those takes on why they die, because it is kind of funny that people are just like, oh yeah, these things kill vampires because they're unholy. But then that you, we all know that if if we're gonna base it off of what you know holy is in in those terms, that means that vampires would be at the oldest 2000 and whatever yeah. years, 2022 years, whatever. <laughs> but dude, okay, so what do you think? Do you do you prefer monster? Because we talked about werewolves and it's like neither of us really like like the dog or like the wolf werewolves. We like like the man beast, like like brute monster creature, like you know, like you can't get like unstoppable force, you know, that comes out. Um but as far as vampires, there's kind of like this weird spectrum that goes from like, like beautiful, you know, like, uh, like kind of like bureaucrat, like, like, you know, like, like bourgeois, like, you know, like having like, um, you know, like handkerchiefs in their pockets and like, you know, just like living forever and sword fighting and like, what were they, the, I, I'm like, thinking of like, I'm thinking of like the, not to, not to bring her up, but Stephanie Myers, I'm thinking of the, were they the Volteri or whatever, the yes. ones that can't, yeah, like the very, yes. Yes. yeah, like, like the very posh and like, you know, like, yes, like, so like you have like, you go from the spectrum, of like the very posh and then somewhere in the middle, you have the like, um, kind of like day-to-day -day, like blue collar vampires like people who are just getting by like in like near dark you know where it's like they're just they're doing what they have to do but they're they're basically as dark versions of people and then you have like the super feral versions where it's like literal monsters that come out you know it's like like they can't help themselves like in like from dust till dawn where it's like from dust till dawn they kind of like stay in that dark end of the spectrum where it's like they are just kind of people but they embrace like the real monstrous side of them and it comes mm. out and like you know and, in droves but um i don't know like do you have a preference in that spectrum like like what they look like when they're in vampire mode yeah or like or, or like yeah like what do you think a vampire should be at their best my and i know it's 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 very much expected for me but like the the lost boys and like buffy like i feel like captures it the best where they can kind of be both like where yeah. they are this normal looking human but they vamp out but it's not too much it's like the brows like you know yeah. like 
you know, the brows get like furrowed and then the, the cheekbones go up and then the jawline's more distinguished. I liked, I liked that a lot. Like, I, like Lost Boys, I think, did it honestly perfect. Oh, yeah. Buffy takes it a little further than Lost Boys, but it's Spike looks amazing when he shifts to, you know, oh, when he sure. dances out. It's awesome. So that's like, but I know what you're talking about too. Like, I even think about like uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Like, wasn't he like, like a wolf beast at one point? Dude, okay, movie? okay, okay. First of all, don't get me started on this, but but, <laughs> but Stephen, very confusing. My favorite. Well, okay, I like the idea. I love the idea that like you that Dracula looks a certain way based on the type of blood that he consumes. I love that. You are what you eat. I love that. Like I love the idea that like if he eats an old person, he kind of looks old. If he eats a young person, he looks younger. If he eats an animal of some sort, he looks like a beast. Um, but why, Stephen? Why is Dracula? the best looking werewolf of all time. Like, I, <laughs> I don't understand it. Like, why does he look so cool? Like, I would love to see a werewolf movie where the werewolf just looks the way Dracula does after he eats a wolf. Like, what the hell? How did that happen? How did we let that slide? How are we like- I'd be mean, like, seriously, like, how did they do that? How did how did, the, how did a vampire movie give us the best looking werewolf? Friggin' like, someone, I mean, Francis Ford Coppola has not been up to much lately, okay? Like, he went, he was like, he was making like amazing movies in the 70s and like, you know, early 80s and stuff. And then he was just like, I'm gonna not make so, so I'm gonna make some movies that aren't so great. And like, okay, but are, can you try again? And he's like, no, I'm gonna make wine instead. And like, okay, but Coppola, and you know, but like, <laughs> ah, freaking Francis Ford Coppola. But anyway, let's wrap it up on the, the, the vampire takes. I'm Stephen. I would eat a vampire is all I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I would eat a vampire. I'm like, I would, there is nothing you can do. There's nothing vampires, you can do. they're <laughs> more than good. They're great. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> dude, can you imagine, though, like, vampire, like, there would be cereals based on vampire blood. Like, we would have oh, yeah, a whole for sure. society. It would be, like, fruit roll-ups, but vampire blood. Like, it's just, oh, my gosh. Can you imagine, like, the ice pops based on, like, that gives you superpowers temporarily? You know, oh. like. I don't, it's blood so orange but it's really blood <laughs> it's you know it's, it's so weird I, I know we're okay we're gonna wrap up this vampire thing but it is weird when like a vampire story like the lost boys is like you're a vampire but you're only half vampire until you drink blood of someone else and you're like how does it know what is it like <laughs> does it like cap it off is it like oh it's surging through my veins but like i need to put like a cork on it with someone else's blood like how does it <laughs> Is it gonna come out? Like, am I gonna like what happened? That's like a well-written virus, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, <laughs> but virus is like, okay, I've completely spread it. I've completely infected every single one of his organs. The only you thing know? I need is somebody else's. What happens if someone what? like spits in their mouth and they have like a busted lip? What like, happens? What? Ha okay, so like, what I want to see is what happens when you just don't drink the blood. Like, yeah. like, okay, what would have happened to to Michael if? He just never, like, like the whole time. Like, that's what was, Star was like that. Lenny was like that. They just, they were like, we're cool. We're vampire. We could fly. We are immortal. We're never drinking blood. It's just not happening for us. And they were, we're not going to do it. But for some reason, they were like, like the rest of the vampires were like, you got, you got to do it. We can eat Chinese <laughs> food. We've, we've proven you can eat Chinese food as a vampire. We've proven that. <laughs> eat Chinese food. And they're like, they're like, well, can we just eat Chinese food and fly around like bats and like have a cool life and stuff? Like living forever? No, you got your blood. <laughs> like, wait, why? <laughs> I just imagine Max like having like the meeting with him. He's like, I guess, I guess you could do that. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay. They don't establish like if you think about it, Stephen. They don't establish at any point. No one ever questions why they drink blood. Like, if they don't have to, they're not like. They, no one even says it's delicious. Like, like I, I wouldn't even take like if David was like, you have to drink it. <laughs> It's so good. Like it's, it's, you remember that Chinese food? It was like the worm. It, it, if the we're worm. honest, David, when he takes that swig, does I don't think he's like fully enjoying it. He kind of looks like I he's mean, like. It's also a little weird that you can just drink your own blood and be cool. Yeah, with it. but like you're you're right though because they never really showed that fact that Star and well, Lenny. Uh, yeah, they never show them like emaciated or anything, no. like as if they've been starving. Because like no. that's usually a plot point in a movie where it's like, yes. I'm bitten, but I don't well, want to eat, so I drink animal blood, so I look sickly yes. because I'm not drinking yes. person. Like, but that's not even something they explore in Lost Boys. Dude, like, that start make, like, and 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 you know what? Like, that's cool. Like, like wrap up that world, like that world building with that little bow for me, because otherwise, I'm here. I'm in the place mm -hmm. I am right now, where I'm saying just fly around like a cool uh like you're just a badass like batman and you like wh why weren't they all superheroes like what is happening you yeah, have superpowers you like there was no reason to drink blood 
There was no reason. There's actually just no evidence that that's the best sustenance for you at all. There, you wasn't, just... there was, there was like, it would have made more sense if it was like, oh, like, look how strong this one is because he drinks blood all day. But like, no, <laughs> the only time we even really see anyone drink blood, it's their own blood. You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> and when they kill the bikers, they're just really messy. Like, they don't yeah, really, oh my like. God, they're just like, he eats it, like, he bites in his head and it's just like spraying everyone. Spray. Why would He's you like... bite someone's head? That's not like, like, that's. I can, that's so hard. What are you thinking? Like, there's, Why there's would you so do this? Blood. Like, there's so many bloody areas. Like, if you're going to, if you're going to eat a Tootsie Pop, you don't start with the stick. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You don't eat it from the stem and work <laughs> your way. Like this is the center of our Tootsie Pop for a vampire. Yeah. Like, 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 get in there. The, it, get, get in there, man. How many bites, that, like how many licks does it take to get to the center? You don't start it here. I'm sorry. Though. That's like way too many licks. Anyway. Okay, Mr. That, Owl would be disappointed. <laughs> Uh, now that you mention it mr owl like uh max did kind of look like mr owl he did so, kind of i think like like maybe there was like a, a tootsie pop parable in in the <laughs> uncovered i've actually been meeting a lot of cool people on twitter uh recently i met so dude i discovered the book called maurice and the metal recently it's actually it has issue three live on kickstarter right now and it's one of the coolest books i've ever read like i just i love it so much it's like it's such like a a fun indie book with heart and it's about this, this kid who um he has a walkman and when he plays metal music it gives him powers and he's he um he kind of hears the voice of his his like deceased father and it's kind of like he's kind of talking him through it and telling him he has like the power of the metal and <laughs> it's, it's so much fun dude it's so much fun because like depending on the song it um it changes the level of power that he can control and exhibit and stuff so it's it's just so much fun but anyway if you get a chance everyone who's listening just go check out uh maurice in the metal um issues one and two are out now uh issue three is being kickstarted and like it lo like it's looking pretty good for that campaign so far but like i want them to succeed because this book is so cool i'll definitely go back that too we're probably gonna end up having the writer of maurice in the metal on our show because like which is it, so awesome yeah because it's such a cool book and he seems like a really cool guy i've been talking to him a little bit um but i definitely back that i hope everyone else does too speaking of other cool creators here are a couple promos for kickstarters that are active right now go check them out So anyway, uh, those people were pretty cool. Haha! Um, <laughs> -ha! So future Anthony's problem. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch, past me. <laughs> but all right, past Stephen is worse than past Anthony. I promise. Oh man, there are there are we, we uh, our past selves are just monsters though. <laughs> Well, I mean, even like with the prince, like you, you just ask me, this is exact like the, the the it would just go like this. I get to work, and for some reason, since I'm at work, I'm on my phone because we drive a lot, yeah. and I'm like, oh, the prince, 
I go to cat prints. Oh, I can't order them from my phone because it doesn't, it doesn't support it from my phone. When I get home, I'm going to do it. I get home, mind erased, get back to work. Oh, the prints. Oh, I can't order them from my phone. And it just keeps repeating until I forever. I need, what I need to do is I need to set alarms. Yeah. And dude, that's, that's what I need to do. Like I have, I'm an alarm. Like I, it's so funny. Tina does it all the time. I don't know why I haven't picked up the, the, this amazing habit. Like, well, that just, was, that's an alarm for everything. That was my life for such a long time when I was so productive. Like my most productive time is when I'm forcing myself to do things. And like, the problem is it starts to become so rigid that I'm just like, oh, oh. And, I, and what happens is anytime someone encroaches on any of that time, I start to feel things about it. And I, I don't want that, you know? So like, mm -hmm. I'm try, like, I've kind of gotten into a pretty good place where I'm mostly comfortable um and finding little bits and little moments when i can get them like whenever i can steal time and like get some writing done or steal time and get some coloring done i feel like i'm making progress it's not as like prolific as it was when i was setting like dedicated you know alarms and stuff but i'm at least not as frustrated when i get interrupted or something mm -hmm. you know like i'm 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 carving out time when it's like organic um so when yeah. when that time is taken suddenly it, it makes sense because you've already yes. kind of yeah because i'm already it, it was already it. a free moment anyway yes. like you were just utilizing it and exactly dude whereas like if i carve out time in a way that's like like specific and dedicated and i'm, I'm just like like super organized about it when i plan like i'm gonna write for a solid hour and then someone calls me and says like oh man i need help doing this or like whatever it may be suddenly it's like my whole world is thrown to a people and i'm just like crap how am i supposed to like i can't reconcile these two things so now like you're the villain even though i want to do the, the i want to help you but i also mm -hmm. am now feeling like you're enc encroaching you know, you know you're stopping on me. this time myself yeah you know. so and i hate that and i don't want to ever feel that way so like that's why i'm trying i try to find like the more organic you know like flow you know moments when i can um that being said like i have i actually deliberately took off work um most of this week so i can get comic book stuff done because so cool. yeah dude i had to because i've been a little behind lately i've been like with you know with the mic stuff and with like a lot of you know just i've you know we've had a lot of stuff going on um i just my progress have been has been really slow so like i i took a like almost a week off of work just to kind of recenter myself and like like, like re a lot time yeah, uh, yeah. Re rewrite like who you are like, and i've been in the process of doing that too and then like i said i got sick which kind of sucked because oh, yeah, like no. i was kind of like i mean i finished page 19 and yeah. i was kind of getting into the swing again and then yeah but no i i feel you like i i have my time like i said i've been getting up earlier you know and, and getting in more time before work because saturday like when play when i was doing play it again fridays and tina worked like three evening shifts during play it again right so now she has like all day shifts and she works friday so i have a lot more family time which is great i love my family time and i love my wife time but i just need to carve out more time to make for the drawings until yeah and it's we're yeah i mean it's well it's true and it's funny because like we just have to kind of employ whatever tactic works for whatever era we're in in our lives exactly. we gotta adjust yep. yeah we have to adjust and be i mean we're, we're adaptable enough with this stuff and like i think through doing this we've been keeping ourselves accountable we just have to remember to forgive ourselves a little and just keep moving you know mm -hmm. and, and i think we're doing a really good job and that you know um i know i've i've failed a bunch of weeks um in ways that like i previously would have given myself a lot of grief for and like maybe i should give myself a little more grief you know but like the truth is i know we're busy i know we're you know we're, we're parents and we're going through trauma like you know like we mm -hmm. have all these like terrible situations and like i've been you know so we're, we're struggling a bit i'm also having this weird like diametrically opposed situation where like i'm the happiest i've ever been you know like i'm also mm -hmm. like in this like great relationship and i'm just like I'm, I'm i'm enjoying my days and my family time and doing these things that just like are sincerely bringing joy to me so i'm not going to like i'm not going to vilify myself when i'm like enjoying my life you know so mm -hmm. i'm like i as long as i'm actively pursuing the thing that like does mean everything to me which is this you know so i'm just like and I, and I am, you know, so this week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write issue two. I'm going to, I'm going to, like, I'm going to first draft it, you know, um, where I'm sure some of the dialogue is not going to be perfect and like, you know, but I'm going to get the, you know, basic, you know, like script done of issue two. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to at least color one solid next page. That's what I'm going to do. Cause coloring, dude, flatting is so time consuming, you know, it's, like, it's, dude, I, like, it really is. It's all, 
it's like it's literally like the math equivalent of art like yeah. it's like it's just all sitting there and just it's just got to be done and it's yeah. like there's not one way to do it, but it's it's i'm not taking away from the art form of flatters but like no, but- it's a very mind consuming numbing process for sure yeah i get but- it yeah. So what are you going to do this week? I will finish, I'm pretty sure, page 20 and then uh, 21, which would be the car hit. Yeah. So I, I can do that for sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, go for 20 and 21 this week. Heck yeah, dude. We're so close. I can't wait. This is going to be amazing. I mean, SpaceCon's obviously going to eat up some time, but yeah. I should be able to do it. So. You just, you, you can work on the page at SpaceCon. <laughs> like, I mean. Yeah, true that. I, I, mean, bring my, be- I, do, I should bring my iPad. You should. You might as well. I mean, yeah, like the doing the sketches and stuff totally help. Actually, what do you think? I mean, it's SpaceCon. We can do like alien based stuff. Maybe we can just draw like simple aliens with different comic book characters or something. Or, mm-hmm. You know, like as different comic. I'm, I xenomorph, don't know. xenomorph, Marvel characters or something. Yeah, that would be cool. Predators, like. Uh huh. That would be fun, but. Uh, we'll figure something out for space guy it'd be fun though. i like i don't care we're gonna go there we're gonna meet some people talk to some people maybe we'll sell a couple books even if we don't it's like we'll learn something about space con we'll learn something we'll just like them. play it again see he travels through time uh, and space, and space. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, it's never, it's, oh, he never directly says that he's not an alien in that, in that book is the thing. Like, he like, comes from the sky in the campfire scene. It's true. So. There is no, I, Stephen, I'll tell you, I've thought about that so much since because when I was writing it, I meant to put like a, a boom box or something in the woods. And I like, we, you know, in the, you know, so like we were all listening to music on a boom box or something. And I just... Totally forgot. I forgot to like make it up. Yeah, point. like oh, he just falls out of the sky. Okay, yeah. just... and it's like, and and it's just like, okay, well, what what is on that record for him to to go there? And it's like, it doesn't really matter. It can be like his friends singing a song because we did sing songs at the campsite. It could be you know like what you know mm. whatever various you know music is playing, but we don't necessarily show the source of that music. And that that kind of like I was like, oh man. But I mean, we we kind of do that with the the oven thing where like he comes out of the oven but like i think the assumption there is the music is playing on the record player uh, like in that house because he's the record player is there yeah yeah but um but anyway so like that that bothered me because i was like man i knew like i had an idea for that and i knew exactly what the source of that music was but i forgot like i just i didn't think to like solidify it in the book it's so so funny. funny Because the pregnancy scene does have the acoustic guitar that you come out of. Yeah, there's an acoustic guitar. There's a house where you'd assume the record player. There's, you know, like, it all Mm kind of makes sense until you get to the campsite and it's like, oh, wait, no, I forgot. Crap. And, like, I mean, honestly, I could, like... We're I mean, we're gonna get to a second run. People who have the first run without the boombox <laughs> are gonna be they're, they're gonna, gonna be, be rich one pretty. Day. They're gonna, gonna be, be pretty. If I were you right now, go buy one of our play the game physical <laughs> Our non boombox edition. Our, our, the non boombox edition. The, the 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 plot hole edition of. Uh, That's literally what that, that that version of the comic would be called too. The the non boombox edition. Was that even me? We'll see. There's supposed to be a boombox in the, <laughs> the the fourth arc of the story, but. Oh, well. But thank you all. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, We appreciate you. We appreciate you subscribing to our channel. I know we forget every single week to tell people to subscribe, but it really does mean everything. If you hit the the little ostrich down there, just actually subscribe and like our show. Um, Thank you for making it this far into the show. If you're only listening on one of the various podcasting apps, thank you to JD. Thank you, JD, our sound producer. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, We hope to see you next week. I'm Anthony. And I'm Stevie Wildcard. This has been episode 92 of We Have Issues. See you next time. Um, I would... I. Oh, man, what was the thing? Hang on, what was the thing that he wanted us to say? Um, oh, it was so good. Oh, what was it? Hang on, we, we should mention it just, like, really quick. I got it. This what is, is it? Funny. Great job, gentlemen, on the continued success of your podcast. I look forward to watching and listening when available to it every Wednesday. Although this is not my department, I keep seeing the requests from listeners for more Tootsie Pops. Ah. Please oh. review this request. Steven. We did it! Steven. We friggin' did Steven. it! <laughs> How did we do it? Yes! Steven! How did we do it? How did we, How did we, we do it? We do okay. it. Subconsciousness. That was amazing. We Steven, did that was it, JD. Amazing. You got your Tootsie Pop. He's gonna. I was Steven. gonna you to edit this part just so. So we, did I, Steven. We accidentally did a thing. <laughs> like.
JD, you need to know. We did no. See, I don't know. Do we tell him? Do I keep do we... this in? Steven. I don't know, G. Okay, okay. Obviously, future Anthony is going to put this after the song. So, the, just so you know, our sound producer JD, our audio producer, uh, send me a, me a memo, and I completely forgot about it until the end of our episode. And I was like, oh, we're going to tack this thing on. We're going to give JD like a little, like a little Easter egg because he asked. He made a joke about us talking about something. And Stephen and I, neither of us could recall what he wanted us to talk about. So Stephen looked up the email and it said, Tootsie freaking Tootsie Pop, Stephen. <laughs> and we totally talked about Tootsie Pops with Max. That's amazing. That's amazing. So great. Anyway, that was amazing. Um, okay, back to the ending. So that's crazy. That's so funny, dude. That's so funny. What are the that's odds? So fun what are the odds? It must have been on your it must have been on your head. Like yeah. So funny, dude. I, I'm so. You know what's funny is like I actually wrote down. What's, what, what's funny is he's gonna think that like you were just that clever to to push it in there at that because like yeah. the conversations are. Yeah, they're so organic. It's not like we could just. It's you organic know, because we weren't thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> why. You know what's funny? It was funny because like I, you know, I, I wrote down the whole list of stuff like conventional wisdom and everything. And like our monster test, I was going to talk about Bigfoot. And then I was like, I can't stop thinking about eating vampires. I was like, if vampires exist, I would just eat. Like, I would I would want to drink a vampire blood just to become a vampire. Like, they would be scared of me. They'd be like, we have to get away from that weirdo. Like, He's you drinking know? us. So I was like, all right, we'll talk about Bigfoot another time. Let's just go vampires step stage one, you know? And like, it just led to Tootsie Pop. That's so freaking funny. Holy crap. Because, anyway. All because David had to bite the guy in the head and not, you know, in the what, yes. center. It's, 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 it's really, it's where it stems from. But oh. all right, man, good luck editing. I know it's going to be cr crazy and chaotic.